So my name is Patricia Keenan. Um, I'm known as Trish. I don't know if any of you were on any of the webinars we were just talking at the start there. They were in February 21. Um, so it's been two and a half years, a uh, long time waiting for this round to come out. Um, there has been some changes and we're going to go through step by step each of the criteria and give you some tips on applying. Um, I'm going to take it that people haven't done it before. So I'm just, if there is any new groups here that we're just giving some information about the registration process and about the sports capital and the type of um, funding it has been traditionally been funding and um, how to access it. So really all the key information about accessing it as well as actually doing the application form. So I will just start now with our presentation. And... Okay, so we're here this evening with Cork Partnership and Watership, Waterford um, Sports Partnership, as well as other clubs. And it's great to talk to a diversity of clubs rather than just being one specific sport, because, you know, there's so much we can learn from each other um, and so much information that some maybe uh, sports do that others don't. So it's a great way to learn together. So um, please feel free to put in any questions as we're going through us through this. Um, if you want to put them up into the chat box, um, either James and Sinead will keep an eye on them too for me, and I will stop at different points along the presentation rather than you having to wait to the very end. So at different sort of key stages, I will stop and answer a few questions. So if you just put them into the chat, then I can deal with them directly. Um, but I'll keep an eye on it as I'm going through it as well. So we'll just do a wee bit of introductions, let you know about the grants allocations in the past, about preparing your application, what the criteria is for an application, what all the documentation you need to have there and again we will do a q a we have big numbers here tonight but um that's only adds to the fund don't worry about it so two into three we're a company based all over ireland and we do lots of different work so let's not worry about that types of things and um, we have worked with a number of sporting organizations national government bodies and clubs and there may be some clubs here who have seen me on um webinars within their own ngbs never mind and um, with the sports partnership so you might be sick of hearing this lovely um dulcet northern accent that's another thing i am aware you know accents can be difficult uh, for some and if there's anything you want me to repeat just please i will not take offense so in terms of previous applications, Waterford and Cork have really increased from the 2018 to the 2021 round. There was a jump in Cork of 171% from what you got the first time in that previous round. And Waterford jumped by 191%. So there is a lot more um, professionalism, more ambition, and, you know, you are really going for it. So what I would love to see is the next time I put one up, it's going to be jumped even more again. So you will be catching up with other clubs. Um, you'll see even, you know, yes, Dublin does get the most, but that's because of population per head. Um, so there is that sort of payments criteria that they do get a bit more waiting and a bit more funding for the um the urban locations. Waterford City is also a part of that. So, you know, there is that um, addressing the population issue when they're um, awarding and allocating by the county. Now, in terms of the previous grant applications, this is how many that they would have got. My apologies here. So there was quite a few. This was for just um, your equipment. So again, big jump from this time um, to the last time round. Now, we still have, in terms of the sports and what the sports, Gaelic games will always be, you know, it is a national sport and it will always have the biggest um, amount. But there are a number of other clubs and a number of other sports which are really, really starting to jump up. So you can see like sailing has jumped up, rowing, hockey, tennis, golf, multi-sport. And in particular here for this round, multi-sport is really a key activity that they want to support. They want to support multi-sport um, centres. So you will see, I would say by the next time around, that will be a huge jump. So there will be. As well as that, there are the top 10 sports. Again, multi-sport is coming in second. So we want to see, they want to see this coming in. They want to see more um, sharing of facilities. And that is being shown by the level of um, scoring that they're giving for the different criteria, in particular, the sharing of facilities. Now, the sports capital and equipment program, and we all, you know, 
abbreviate it and I'm the worst culprit of it of saying SCP and I forget the SCEP. They have designed the program and if you go through their lovely 50 page operational guidelines um, on applying for this grant, they do say about how much easier they're making it <clears throat> for equipment applications. So they really want to see small clubs. If you've never went before, they want to see you go for it. They want to see as many access this money. There is a huge budget um, in the actual um, government announced budget. There was 181 million. Last time round, they gave out 166 million in total. So they've increased the pot. We have been made aware that that has been increased further. We don't know to what level. So there is a huge um, bank of money there to be applied for and they want to see as many applications as possible across a diversity of applicants. So it is actually to develop sustainable facilities in the locations which will maximise participation in sport. Always remember that's the key, participation in sport. And that will come up so many times when you're thinking to yourself, what is eligible? But eligibility, always think, will this help participation in sport. Now there is a prioritization being made this time around as well for those within disadvantaged areas of working with different groups, especially those with disabilities in providing sports facilities. There's a huge push for um, female participation in sport and we're coming off the back of the World Cup as well. You know, there will be a huge investment there for female and they want to see how you're going to address that. And I'll show you on what sections to really address that in your application. Coming back to the sharing of sports facilities, you know, they want to see sports crossing the divide. They want to see physical health, physical res recreation. So if you can provide sports facilities, it's not just other clubs, it's to other community interests, it's to other types of users, recreational users. It's not just for organised sports. So who can apply? Voluntary not-for-profit sports clubs. So it's not for private gyms or for private golf clubs or private sports facilities. It's only for the not-for-profit. Community groups and organisations, they can also apply things like the Scouts, um, you know, your community centres, community development groups, all of that. Your national governing bodies, so the IRFU, FAI, GAA, um, Canoe in Ireland, Rowan Ireland, Basketball Ireland, they're the national governing bodies. And third level colleges, um, ETBs and schools can only apply if they have a joint application with a sports club. So a school cannot apply for this without a sports club supporting them. And it goes in now as a joint application. So they want to see um, how you're actually working together and uh, really showing proof of how you're going to work together. So first things first, you need to get registered with Oscar. You will get to know the name Oscar. You may um, not like Oscar and you may fall out with Oscar and we'll all have choice words about Oscar um, over the next eight, six, six weeks. Um, but it is a reality and once you get used to the system, it's not too bad, but it can take a wee while to get used to that system. You must register with Oscar. You have to be registered with Oscar by the fit to Friday, the 25th of August, if you intend to make an application. After that date, and if you don't have an Oscar account, you cannot apply. So if your sports club does not have an Oscar account, you need to get this done. And you need a valid tax clearance number to do that. Um, the Revenue Online Service will help you with putting that together. It is not so that um, for paying taxes or anything like that it's to prove that you're not for profit so that is why they ask you to put in your vac your tax clearance number for your club and you will need that regardless most of ngbs will require that at some stage as well you all prefer prefer prepare um, annual accounts because you've got your membership fees and things like that so you just need to get registered and it's not about catching anybody out about tax it is literally so they can prove that you are a proper you are who you say you are, and that's the system and how they do it. So you need to be registered on Oscar. And once you go on to Oscar, this is your dashboard, and you will go to that very first tab there. It says apply for a grant, and you'll see 2023 Sports Capital Programme. If you've been on Oscar before, you'll be able to see all of your old previous applications, and then you can make sure you haven't duplicated. Um, you can see who, you know, what was the process, what you asked for, what language, all of those type of things, even your license agreements and all your old license agreements will be there.
because all the documents stay on it. So that is, I can't stress it enough. And sorry for those of you who have probably been on Oscar already and have done this sort of application before, but for those of you who haven't, maybe a new club, it is key to get registered on that system. So once you're registered on the system, what is available? A capital grant of up to 200,000, um, and that is capital if you're doing some actual groundwork on um, your building or on your premises or on the training facilities. Equipment grants of up to 70,000, but the maximum allowed for maintenance within that is 40,000. That will refer to more or less a lawnmower. That's usually what maintenance equipment it is there. Um, it used to be 30,000 and they've increased it to 40,000. So within that 70,000, you could buy one piece of maintenance equipment up to 40 and then spend the other 30 on gym equipment or balls and bibs, whatever it should be. <clears throat> now you can apply for both capital and um equipment and your maximum will be 200 so that would be still the maximum it's not 270 you've got you know 70 for equipment and 200 for capital the max you can apply for is 200,000 a regional grant if you are being supported by your national governing body it used to be only the national governing body could apply for the half for the half million it used to be 300,000 but it's half million now they've increased all these levels um but you need to be supported by your national governing body and you need to be telling your national governing body that you want to go in as a regional application and you need their letter of support. It used to be only a regional application could be made by either a League of Ireland club or a um, national governing body. So it has, you know, reached out a bit more, but you still have to be supported by, by them. You will often hear that you only need 5%, you only need 5%. 5% is the minimum ever you need and the rate of funding and your match funding is dependent on your location and I'll explain what I mean by that later um, and you need to be very careful about looking at what you can afford and looking at the scoring criteria and what that will what that means for you so eligible items that are under this here especially for um, a capital program so you're talking about your pitches if it's a field sport tracks courts and it's for your drainage and irrigation systems it's also your artificial tracks um, courts and multi-use games areas it's for drainage it's for led flood lighting it will only support led it will not support any other type of lighting time and equipment, fitness studios, security fencing and CCTV and pitch side fencing. But that CCTV will only be for your playing areas. It wouldn't be if you had a function room and you wanted a CCTV inside your function room. It's only for your playing areas. And then hurling walls, walking, jogging tracks, um, the build refurbishment or building of a sports hall, modifying your sports hall for those with disabilities and modifications to reduce energy consumption. In terms of what's available for equipment, non-personal sports equipment, and that, as I say, can be like lawnmowers or other maintenance equipment up to the value of 40,000. They are actually letting you put in portable storage containers this time around up to 25 meters square as equipment. Previously, that was capital, but you still may need just to check that you don't need um, planning if it's, you know, there's not going to be any foundations there. Storage facilities, um, outdoor um, equipment, including for tennis, table tennis. Um, this is the first time they've allowed swimming pools to be included in this here um, programme. Sports Capital always excluded swimming pools. And it's a, even the purchase of those pop-up portable swimming pools, which are becoming quite popular and seem like Swim Ireland, I know, has put a few of them around in different locations during the summer. Capital projects are sporting in, in nature and increased participation. So it does not fund seating spectator stands, anything to help your spectators, car parks, a playground, anything like that, because that's not about play, playing your sport and participating in sport. So like what I said to you at the very beginning about this program, this is about participation in sport and always think of participation in sport, not your supporters. So is this to help your players or is this to help a supporter? And you need to you know, really look at that. Now, non-eligible items, non-LED lighting, um, campsites, any sort of vehicles, viewing stands, car parks, um, 
the new one has come out about it's not a new one but it's some people are debating this it and telecommunication so it's not for like some purchasing computers or phones or anything like that it's not for any sort of revenue costs running costs or any professional services so the likes of few and stands or playgrounds or you know um sportswear which will have names or anything like that on it so we go back here i'm just going to check the Q&A, is that all about just clubs names at the moment? No, we have a couple of questions there. I'll go to one. OK, for you. so. So, so the non-personal equipment, the lady side of the club are looking at replacing old gymnasium equipment is the mass grub. I'll go through that in a wee second here. Um, it's strange now they've got a bit of positive discrimination going on with this round of capital um, funding in that a female only club are eligible, but a male only club isn't. A male only club has to show access to women. It's to give um, equality of access and to bring the level of um, services and facilities available for women in sport up to the same level. So there is that for the ladies. Um, so, yes. There is, if it's the ladies side of the club, we're looking to place old gymnasium, the maximum grant, if it's only for gymnasium, it's the maximum grant is 70,000 for equipment. It's only 40K when it comes to maintenance. So the likes of one item of maintenance equipment, but the, for equipment, the full amount available is 70K. And you could have, um, you know, a license agreement there between the men and the ladies and there you've got your sharing of facilities. So that's no problem. The next question is, are all regional helplines open? Um, someone knows of one group that rang last week and got an out of office until the first week of September. Can they call another region to make a query? Seriously. I know a couple of them are there, but oh my God. Um, yes, I would. Or even ring the head office in Tralee. I would phone the main office. Is it Tralee or Killarney? It's in Kerry, one of them. I would run, ring the main office and see can, who else you can call first. Um, but I didn't know some of the regional. I don't ring all the regional helplines. I know a couple of them that I'd be going through. So I'm not too sure. Um, but if you do ring the head office and just explain to them or drop them an email and explain to them that you want to know who to talk to. Um, um, another question there is, can you split capital and equipment grants? So go for equipment as a club but capital is a joint application with a community no you can only apply once so if you're applying um you as a group even and if you have a license agreement with somebody else to go as a joint applicant you can't have two bites of the same chair of the cake so you only have one application that you can go into but you can apply but you can apply for capital and equipment as one but yeah your maximum is going to be 200 um but you can't apply twice it is because and you have to put in your oscar registration number so that's how they'll know whether or not you're applying twice and next question there is retail in the pool shell of a community run swimming pool would that qualify yes another one can you apply for dugouts and scoreboards yes you can indeed that's no um, problem i'll look at one more is a license agreement with a ladies slash girls GA club enough to show sharing of facilities and thus increase female participation? Yes, it is indeed. Definitely. And I'll, I'll go back to the other questions then shortly. Um, yeah, in relation to CCTV, can it be applied for a boxing club or all in place indoors? Yes, of course. Um, what are items are regarded as capital and what are equipment? Equipment is basically a piece of something you're buying, an actual item, um, which is standalone, which is portable and mobile and can be moved about. Um, capital is something that is fixed. So it's a wall that you're building or digging out or something. It can't be moved. Um, as a scout group, trailers, no, is not included. Um, is the 500 regional amount separate to the other capital and equipment? No, you would either be a capital or a local application. So you're one or the other. You can't be both application. Um, to be honest, we had that one about the um, laying of concrete from a wheelchair parking space. No, it wouldn't be because you're saying from a parking space. But if you're saying to get to the shooting line, you need to put in concrete pathways to make it accessible for wheelchair users. Yes, that is applicable. So it's how you define what you're doing. So it's just to make your shooting line um, a 
you know, accessible, that you need to have this uh, need concreted. Yes, that's making your sports facility um, accessible for disabled users, but you can't um, say that you're doing it along a car parking space because that's where the you know the car parking space is. It's how you more or less term what you're doing. The school applies. I'll go through this all later with schools, but yes, you apply and you go in as an you can go in because you own whoever owns the land that the capital projects being is that is who the applicant is. So if it's either owned or long term leased, that's who is the one that's putting in the thing. And all of these other ones, I think I'm going to be covering in the next town or village qualify for a 500k application it can if it's being supported by a national governing body so you need to be getting that cleared with them or your local authority yeah all these other things i'll be doing under the other one um if i don't have an sponsor to have the outside to show the current lease as a certain one goes if you're if you're only spending twenty five thousand on LED and fencing, um, then you wouldn't need a long term lease. So you don't because anything under seventy thousand for capital, you just have to show that your landlord's not going to throw you out in the next five years. They just have to say that they have no intention of throwing you out. Okay, but I'm going to go through all those in the next bit. Okay, so scoring criteria. This is where you need to be very careful on about how you look at your application. 71% of the score is all about your members and all about the people in your club and only 30%, roughly 30%, is about how much this is going to cost and about the money, okay? So when you're preparing an application, think of your club members. Think about who is um, turning up every day, who's coming through the gates. Who do you allow onto your facilities? Do you allow um, a mum and toddlers group? Do you allow a walkers group? Do you allow the men's shed? You know, do you share with another sports club? Um, it's not just who is competing. It's about everything else. So tell the story of your club. So the first one, which is the big scoring, and this is where, you know, they really want you to tell the story of your club. How are you going to increase participation and improve performance? And that's why I'm saying things like car parking and all their internal, you know, things that make it nice. That's not going to really sell it. They want to see about improving participation and performance. Um, Sharing of facilities, have you license agreements? You only need two license agreements. This time around, um, it's not 15 years, they're only five years as a license user's agreement. However, if you're going in as a joint application with a school um, or you're going to go for a regional, then you would want to be putting into a 15 year lease. A 15, sorry, I always get them two words mixed up. A 15 year license, okay? Level of socioeconomic disadvantage in your area. Now, that is not just where you're based. That's your whole catchment area. So there, I'll show you where it is in the questions. You have to talk about where everybody comes from. So you may be just located in an affluent area. However, your users, your members, um, all your visitors, all of that, they come from a wide catchment area. And you want to be including that and showing the disadvantaged areas, the women, um, even if there's any um, diverse communities, new communities, traveler communities, anything like that. So that is where, you, and there you see 95 points is just about those two things. You know, you would pass just without those things um, and get a very high score. So focus on telling, telling the story of your club. Technical merits of the project is whether or not you've got your right paperwork. And if you have got planning or you need planning, you don't have to have planning, but you'll get zero points there. But if you have planning, then you will get up to the nine points. Um, there was last time, and they will be doing it again, uh, bonus points for not using the second chance facility. Do not rely on the second chance facility. Um, there is one where if you make a mistake, but it is supposed to be for genuine mistakes. So if you knowingly upload the wrong document, knowing it's the wrong thing, you know, don't rely on it. And they may get strict because you do sign that and you knowingly put everything into that document as correct as you could. So do keep it, do not rely solely on that second chance. It's there, it's great, it's a safety net if you do make a mistake. 
Level of home funding by deprivation index. This is where you will find out what your index um, number is based on your location. And um, that's then you have to, it's a sliding scale on what matching funding you need to put in to get the high scores. You can't change this here. It's on the system what uh, sports capital funding you've received in the last years. And it, again, it's a scale. Um, the more you get, the less points. And this is the two new ones, Env evidence of environmental initiatives and climate adaption. So they want to show how you are addressing um, your sustainability and climate um, change. So there is an appendices there and we'll explain that in a minute. And then population growth and level of existing facilities. So if you're saying, okay, we want an astro, there already is an astro down the road, but it's because you can't get on it because of the waiting list and, you know, we're all waiting to get onto these, um, onto the use the facilities. So there's too much demand to cope with it anymore. So this is the new thing as well. And I just pulled this off um, the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission because I thought it was a really, really useful way. As part of the gender equality that they're putting across for you know the, the clubs and also those for disadvantaged areas, they have actually as part of signing up for sports capital you say you are agreeing to the equal status act your club so that covers the nine grounds of gender marital status family status age disability sexual orientation race religion and membership of the traveler community so you are agreeing to sign up to the equal status act and as i say this pull i pulled this from the ihrec and that sort of sort of give the detail of what that means for a club and how they can put that into action. So as part of um, when you're successful with your application, you will be asked to show how you're in, um, including all these areas into your club. So it is something that clubs will be asked to adopt and you will have to be, to be bringing it in as part of your club's rules and regulations. So we go on to the criteria. Criteria one, this is the participation. So you need to tell your club story and initiatives all to include your, um, to encourage, but you've got 800 characters. 800 characters is not a great deal, including the fact that um, a space bar and a full stop is a character. So you have to be very, very clever about how you tell your story. You need to show how you're going to, you know, as I say, you want to purchase, going to one of the questions that was there, you're going to purchase um, gem equipment for the ladies side of the club because, you know, just in terms of they want their own safe space to go and train. So that's your reasoning. You know, we want to purchase this so the ladies um, members of the club have their own safe space to train and they can provide support for each other. What diverse communities have you got? Have you any of them, you know, been welcoming any of the Ukrainian refugees or any other refugee communities? Is there um, any diversity within your group? You know, what other charters? Look up what NGB you are and look up and see what charter that they would have that you are, you know, signing up to and being a part of. They've also mentioned not just physical health, mental health. So what, you know, what are you doing to help those with their physical and mental health? who participates in your club and what other facilities are in your area. So does it specifically improve female participation fees? Do you help disadvantaged users? On page one or tab one, I should say, on your application, you've got that in project overview. That's where you've got your 800 characters. You want to get those key words and key messages into that first one. How your project benefits those from disadvantaged areas, either they come from a disability group or a um, minority group, um, how it'll help um, improve female participation. So you want to look at all that there and you want to get those key words in. Then on the second tab, they will ask you about your membership. So when you're talking about your membership, you want to explain about how um, your membership is drawn from all the different areas and actually name the parishes of where some of your members are from, especially and put the score. So if they're in a highly disadvantaged area, name that parish and that score, deprivation score. I'll show you how to do all this here in a couple of slides. So you want to be actually naming the parish when you're talking about your membership. We'll also be asked in that second tab, how, what is your club doing to promote 
um, participation to disadvantaged communities. You can talk about maybe your summer camps that you might be running. Um, you can talk about things that you might be doing within the schools, you know, inviting school children along. You may be asking, you know, if you're a part of your NGB has got a specific sport and um, women in sport program that you have adopted that. Each of those questions on the second tab about your membership has 300 characters. So get the story of your club, do it on Word, count your characters, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it. What I do is I have a list of what I need to be telling, um, bullet point list of what you need to be telling. And you need to get that across that list of what you need to be telling and getting that message into those two tabs everything, the story of your club. That's the only place you get to have that um, story of your club to be told in these, those first two tabs. Excuse me. Um, so we go on to the second one, which is your sharing of facilities. So schools can be an application, but it has to be a joint um, application with a club with a license agreement of 15 years. Other sharing agreements, just as users, and you're not signing up to a full license as a joint application, is five years. So it's only maximum two needed to get the maximum mark, marks. They are, there's a template included in those for Appendix 3. Um, you can draft to include as much or as little as you need. There are the, the basics that have to be covered, but you need to show how you're sharing your facilities. Um, just if, I don't know if there's schools here or sports clubs are, you know, represented on this call here tonight, but make sure you do negotiate that license agreement because you do need each other. And this is gonna be a relationship you are gonna to have to work together on. And in one of those things, when you're saying about sharing the facilities, when they ask you who you're sharing your facilities with, mention that you will work together, that you will set up a joint committee on the overall project management of the facility, um, that you will consult with each other. You know, there will be when there's a section about your facilities and you will say how the facilities are managed and that's where you'll talk about it. Now, interestingly, somebody asked me the other day um, about these two questions, um, the criteria one and criteria two. How do they know if you're if you're lying? You could just tell a brilliant story about your club and it's not real. They will check your social media. They will check your websites. They will check all those things. So they do check. And um, if you're talking about, you know, we've done a great summer scheme this summer and, you know, there's all these kids and with all this and your social media has one picture up from, you know, three years ago which doesn't represent you, they might ask, well, can you show some evidence of this? So, you know, whoever is your PRO, see what's on your social media profiles and get that boosted because they may check. You never know. And that's, you could be one of the random ones that they go to check just to back up what we do. Um, I know for ourselves, when we are doing an application in particular, if the club or the, you know, the school is in a particularly affluent area, we would do like a bit of a scan exercise and get the postcodes of all the members so we can back it up. So if you're ever asked for something, always be prepared to back it up with evidence. You don't have to do it in the application but you never know when you might be checked on for an audit. So, you know, be careful with how you put these things across. Okay, this is the lovely deprivation index. And we picked this one because it's in Dublin and it shows a quite a variety of the orange and the blue. Um, this is the website for this. Um, and if anybody's done this before, they'll know um, this deprivation indices. It's set up by, it's based on census data from 2016, which I know is out of date, but there was no census done in 21 and they just don't have it done um, updated yet. So it is very out of date. So in the top left hand corner, you put in your postcode of your facility and you will come up whether or not you are in the blue or in an orange area. And when you click on that there, it will come up what your actual um, HP deprivation index is. So it can be minus 10, it could be minus 9.21, it can be um, 16.03, um, it can go either way. So the more blue you are, the more affluent. And the only thing that this really, your what this score will determine is the level of match funding you need to put in. 
Now, when I'm talking to you about mention the parishes, mention the areas, mention the housing estates, whatever it is, this is what you also need to be looking at. So look at where your members are. And if you see um, some of the different areas are quite orange and you're able to pinpoint, oh yeah, we have players from there or we have groups that come from there to our facilities, name that particular townland, parish, electoral district, whatever you can, and put the actual score. So that's when your membership, it's in the second tab when they talk about membership. So you would be saying um, that you have a, a, my apologies. So you would say, you know, we have members drawn from, I'm just taking this here, Dolphins Barn, and the score is da da da. We have members also from, da, da, and you know, we carry out outreach programs to this in a school. We go to a school in and mention the school and where it is. You know, be as direct as that to get that across, because then you will get the points for your disadvantage, that big um, criteria one, which is 60 points. Um, but this here is only for the level of own funding. And you can see where has that gone? Oh, there. So that's your level of thing. So technical merits is where you have the quotations valid for all work being done. Um, that's of your equipment and um, whether or not you've got your plan and permission. If you say plan and permission is not required, you need to get that signed off that it's not required. Um, and that could be signed by a quantity surveyor, an architect or a council rep. Um, there is a second chance facility, but as I say, don't rely on it. So just get that's about just making sure your paperwork's all in order. And this is where I'm saying about this is where your deprivation index. So if you have a catchment score of 15 and you want to get the maximum points available, which is six points here, you would have to be putting in 40 percent. Now, if you're doing really well on every other part of your application, you could afford to say, listen, we don't need the six points. We're OK. We've got high levels of disadvantage. We've got, you know, we, we've ticked all the boxes for female participation. We've got everything else, um, but we can't afford this. So we're only going to put 25 percent in. You'll get three points. So don't just jump on it and say, oh, well, we need to get the maximum points. You could trade some points for everything. You can't get the maximum points for everything. So just be careful on what you can trade. However, if you have um, a catchment score of below um, minus 20, you only have to put 10 percent. So that's where the difference of what your actual address is. But as I say, the points are only this level. Um, it's more about your catchment area and telling the tale of what your catchment area is. And then on top of that, then you can't change this here. It's, oh, sorry. I was going to say, if you are needing matching finance, um, whether or not it's your club. So say your club has got a very healthy bank balance this month um, to get a screen grab off it. And that can be some of it. It doesn't mean you have to have the money here and now. You've still got another six to nine months to do fundraising or to find alternative match funds. So, um, but you just need it now. Or you can go and get a loan in principle from your bank, your credit union, or the two social finance companies are Clan Credo or Community Finance Ireland. And they would be used to just working with sports clubs. They have specific um, funds available for sports clubs to provide bridging loans and to provide match funding. And they would fill out Appendix 1 on your behalf then and say, yes, OK. So that's Clan Credo or Community Finance Ireland. And you'd need to be getting in touch with them very quickly because I know they're getting they are very, very busy. This is what you've had before. As I say, it's a sliding scale. If you have had um, more points you know, you, you didn't get much grant before, you'll get the maximum points. If you've got lots of money in the past 10 years, you'll get zero. There's nothing you can do. It's on the system. Um, they will just score you about what, based on what money they've given you before. And these are the new ones. So environmental sustainability. So we're looking at, um, this is on the third tab if I'm not mistaken, and your site management and facilities. So you also need to be looking at how you are um, reducing your carbon footprint, footprint, what biodiversity plans you have. And that could be simple things like planting wildflowers. They're also saying, be careful, there's a whole appendix six in this and there are other funds available there. So they're saying, you know, apply to other places too, you know, if you can, um, but they want to see what sustainability plan you have in place. So everything that you're saying and you're answering the question for, um, 
you are choosing that because it is a more sustain sustainable option. That's why they're only funding LED floodlights or not um, funding um, normal lights or anything like that there. And then this is the other one, um, population change. So again, when you're saying about what's available in your area, um, you want to say there's an increased demand, there, are, there is another hall, and you have to list what facilities you have and give a narrative on what facilities you have. And this is where you put this in. The school's growing and unable to cater for the sport. Um, there's new families in the area. You know, you can't get into the facilities that are there with the waiting list, things like that. It can also be, you know, um, for female participation as well. I think I should take some questions now before we go through the documents. What do you think, Sinead? Yeah, there's a lot there. I'll, there's a I'll lot them there. Out here. So if anyone needs to hear the answer, they'll be able to hear what the question is. So can you apply for a capital item where planning permission is required but hasn't been applied for yet? Yes. Um, regarding the regional grant of 500,000, can that include the equipment grant of 70,000 as well? Yes, indeed. Can you apply so for nice. Can you apply for a clubhouse lift? No. Um, so scoring criteria six suggests that the previous awards of this fund is an advantage. Sorry, what, what was that? So the criteria six. So if you've received funded previously, is this an advantage or a disadvantage? Or it it a depends on scale? how much you've got. It's a sliding scale. So the more money you've got from them, the less points you're going to get. OK, is a portable container with showers allowable? You will need planning for that. Um, is it allowable? Um, yeah, you're just putting up a portable building rather than a, a fixed building. It's the same rules. You'll have to go for planning and all of that as well. Um, I think you probably covered this, um, Trish. Please clarify how the deprivation index is used. The pool in an affluent area, small area services a much wider area. Exactly. You just need to cover, you know, when you're showing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about your membership. It's on the second tab. Talk about where everybody else is coming from. Yeah, OK, it's buying LED and fence and under capital and it's approximately 25,000. Will the organisation still need to show the current lease has a certain amount of years left on it? Yes, five. Um, because you're only under um, under 70,000. And this is from someone based in Cork. Our colours are based in a multi-sport complex and are registered as a tennis club with Tennis Ireland. We pay the complex for the use of the community facilities for tennis courts. We have a TRN and Oscar. Do we need to apply with the sports complex? What if they want to apply for money for a different type of sport like hockey on this site? Can there be only one application as a sports complex? So yes. Actually, yeah. Yeah, that's happened before where, you know, any multi-sports complexes, we have seen that they've just, you know, everybody's had to take a turn on who can apply. Now, the thing is, if you are based in that multi-sport complex, it's them that's going to be applying, not you as a tennis club, because they're, unless they're going to be giving you a, um, a lease just for those. So they'd have to be giving you a 15 year lease to manage just the tennis you'd be a center, separate entity um as a co you know you would have a business arrangement with them for the tennis clubs so you're not just paying for the use of them as and when you're you're going to be paying a yearly fee um but you need to apply the sports complex themselves they'll be the applicant and they can only apply once so they'll have to decide you know i know one in particular i did um in dublin and it literally was each time around everybody got a turn OK, we are currently negotiating a new lease. Our current one is less than five years. I don't think it will be finalised by the deadline day. Would a letter from a landlord like Cork County Council suffice? Um, this is where you might have to just use your, the backup facility and put that letter in and hope that it will, it will help if you're not going to have it. If you're going for the full amount of 200, you need to have that lease in place for 15 years. Um, so that would be, you know, I would just say no. But if you're really, and you think it will be, you will be getting the lease. It is something that you can ask the Cork County Council, will they put this in writing? I know it was done before. I done it. I know an applicant that did it because the lease just wasn't in place. So they put the letter in um, from their national governing body. And then from that, then um, they were able to use a second chance facility. Um, the next one, can clubs back up applications with stats from the census or from Hubble? Yep, certainly. Um, Definitely. 
is it now a requirement to specify five years only on new license agreements or is it okay to still go with 15 years as oh yeah year? definitely go with a 15 if you can get a 15 definitely um, could clubs purchase the installation of some cycle racks for people yes. to be able to cycle to the club? What category yep. does that come under? That would come under um, capital because it's they're fixed to the ground, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So they would uh, be capital. We are looking at completing some environmental upgrades to a heating system. I see this is included in the grant, but how much weight does this pull in in comparison to participation, for instance? I find it hard to draw the link. Well... <laughs> This is where you would need to be a bit more creative with words. So you are going to make it more comfortable for people to play, to swim, um, that you are making it more sustainable facility. Therefore, you know, in terms of the swimming's um, impact on the environment, you need to improve this. So there is lots of ways you could, you know, word that, you know, definitely. There's lots of ways. you. It's like putting in... Um, you know, the LED lights, you know, it's saving them money, the club's money. It's having an environmental impact. It's the same with heating in a swimming pool. It's the same, it's the same justification. Um, the next one, if you only have a license agreement with one other club, will you get yeah. fines for that? Yeah, there's um in total of nine, I think it's a uh, seven or is it fifteen or something? It's seven for one and um fourteen for two. And then we have license sharing. Is that really applicable to a community pool open to all? If you have a pool that's open to all and you are a community centre, that is that you're absolutely fine. You won't need a license agreement. Although I would say if you have a swimming clubs coming in or, you know, any special Olympians or anything like that there coming in to use that pool, I would be putting them in as with that as well. But you don't have to have it. No, you don't have to have it. Um, the next one, when applying, can you change or modify what grant is spent on after you receive approval? You can ask for a change of use. However, you have to stay within the spirit of the sum of the original application. So if you have applied for, um, to get an example, a heating system on a pool, you couldn't then turn around and say, well, we want to do now um, the change of facilities because you're changing the entire focus of your application so every reason why you've justified that on how it'll impact and participation is not going to be the same so you have to stay within as they say the spirit of the application um the next one for a club whose grounds are used under a rolling annual license are there any restrictions on what we can apply for just fair use of facilities and grounds as part of tennessee agreement count as sharing in terms of grant application there's two questions of that one now and i'm a bit rolling if you only have a rolling that means you've only got um it, it if you've only got an annual then you can't be the application the applicant as such it's only whoever has the actual um signs the lease or the ownership of it so if you're you would be restricted and all you can apply for would be up to the 7K, 70K and that would be for any capital items as well as any equipment that you want to, do, to use. Um, and yes, the sharing of facilities as part of your tenancy agreements is sharing in terms of the grant application. Yes, that's true. But you would be limited because you don't have a 15-year lease and you don't have ownership. So you couldn't apply for the bigger money. Um, Okay, so I just see in regards to 5% own funding in the capital grant guide, it states the maximum valid grant awarded to an applicant will be reduced to reflect the amount of own funding available. Yes, well, you're saying you have what, they will only give you what you can show you can match. So if you're saying, okay, I can't match that up to a certain level, you know, you can't. So if you ask for 200,000, but you can only match it you have to match it by 5% and you can't even show that you can match that by 5%. They're going to decrease what you can apply for. So you have to always, you have to make sure that you can prove that you can match whatever you're saying you're going to be. If you want to just put in the 5%, you need to show the full 5% that you can do, that you can match with that. I don't know if that answers that question because I'm a bit confused by the thing. Um, 
there's kind of a follow on um, question to this. Does this mean you get less money with more funding? I don't really understand what you mean. Um, so perhaps, Gary, you could write your question into the Q&A again and we can take a look at it. Or again. at the end, maybe we, I can have a chat with you about it or you can email me directly. Um, the more money you only get what you, so if you ask for if you're going for 200k and you can only put up five percent which is what ten thousand on top of that then that's what you'll be scored on only putting in five percent so um if you say you can afford fifty thousand you'll say well i'm going to put in 20 you know that 25 so you'll get scored for 25 percent if you say okay in our bank account we've got half a million and um, I'm applying for 200K, they may ask, well, what do you want the grant for? But you just have to justify what the other money's for. It could be something that's been earmarked as part of a bigger scheme. Um, like we would have people who apply for grants of 200,000, but the full project cost could be 700,000. So, because they're gonna be fundraising the other half a million. So, you know, it really depends on what you apply for. There isn't a golden rule to say, you know, if you put in this, we'll give you that. Or and if you can prove this, then we, you know, we'll take money off you or anything like that. Um, so I think I think provide frequent use of our grounds to our local Camogie club, but don't have a license agreement in place. Do we need this? Yes, you will. You will need a license agreement if you want to get it for um the sharing of facilities. You have to prove what it is. Um Yes, and the same, even if the school only use it occasionally, that's fine because there's, you know, you can only have to have it let out to other people for 20 hours in a, a week. And that's like full week hours, it's not just like within a certain time frame. Um, multi club GA facility score higher on environmental impact. It depends on what your sustainability plan and that you follow um, all the environmental plans. When you mention at least 50, is it 15 unexpired years? It was two year olds now. Yeah, it's 15 years from, it's actually 15 years from the date of the last payment of your grant. Um, so there will be, um, if you have only 13 years left, that's not valid. So, you know, that's what um, there will be, you know, you have to have 15 years from the last moment of the, the money is spent. There is nothing to say that your money from the last round which hasn't been spent will go against you but they will ask you why it's not been spent as a follow-up you will be asked why if even if you haven't got a formal approval you know you should be keeping in touch with your um your regional officer if you can get in touch with them and you should be letting them know how you are going about spending this money there is a huge concern about the amount of grants unspent that are out there um, huge concern and this is why I would say even there's been a delay because they want to put this across um, they may give you a letter of offer the next time around saying you know you have to have this money spent I don't know how they're going to deal with it but it is something it came up in the review documents it's coming up in any sort of prime minister uh, sorry my northern coming out of me here any questions in the dial any of that there so it is definitely something that's being discussed so my advice to you is if you have outstanding grants there um, you want to be showing a, a plan on how you intend spending that and that you're not applying for more money on top of those with no contact with them or even a plan on how that money is going to be spent. OK, we'll go through the documents now and see where we go from there. So Appendix 1 is your loan in principle. And that's what I'm saying if you need to get much um, a grant or anything like that. Um, a, you know, a, a bridging loan for the grant because you'll get paid the money up front. Um, you don't get paid the money up front. My apologies. You don't get paid the money up front. So you will be claiming the money back and you also need to be showing your match in finance. So if you need to show a loan in principle, it is a loan in principle. You don't have to draw down that loan. You can be doing your own um, fundraising over the next six to nine months to pay for this or next 12 months and to raise the match finance but you will need to show what your match finance is and they will go to either the bank the credit union or the likes of clan credo or community finance ireland 
Appendix two is your planning permission. So if you don't need planning permission and if it's a capital project and there's, you know, you can't just say we don't need planning permission. You have to prove it. They won't take your word for it. So you need to get this signed off to say if it's a capital project that you don't need planning permission. Um, now, if you do need planning permission and it's not applied for, you just need to be putting that in as part of this up it to be applied for. OK, and it needs to be signed off by a technical supervisor. So that can be a quantity surveyor. Um, it can be somebody, a contractor. It can be an architect or you can go into the local council and they can sign that for you. But that has to be and that's appendix two. So if you're going for a capital project, you have to show you can't just say it doesn't need planning. You have to prove that it doesn't need planning. Appendix three, this is the license agreement and this is the template that they'll give you. There's about two or three pages that I'm just showing you the cover page. And this shows you all the key elements that they require, require in a license agreement. Um, this will be a legal agreement. So you need to have make sure it is legally binding and have a look at it. Most of the NGBs, I know GAA have their standardized license agreement, which has been prepared by their in-house solicitors. So if you contact your county board or your um, region, your provincial board, they'll be able to give you the template, the GAA template for it. IRFU have got the same, FAI have the same. So if you'd contact any of the others, I know um, those basketball and things like that were drawn some up. Um, so contact them and say, do they have any templates for a license agreement that they can give you rather than having to get a solicitor to draft it from scratch? But there are templates there um, and get it signed off. This is what I'm saying about um, if you were going for capital and it was under the 70,000 when that guy, one of the clubs there was asking about 25K. You can get your landlord to sign this off if it's under 70,000, your capital works, to say that they have no intention of um, putting you out of the premises in the next five years. It's not they're saying they won't, but it's saying they have no intention of doing so. Um, the reason for this is they're not going to pay for, you know, capital works to a, uh, a sports hall, which you're going to be put out of, and there's the government money has done it up, and you know a private landlord's getting the benefit of that. So that's for any capital under forty, under seventy thousand. Appendix five is whether or not um, the school. So if you're with this, this is not a school, this is with um, any other landlord, this is your license agreement for over 15 years. They're, they do actually ask for it to be a minimum of 15 years. We would actually put a recommendation of putting in for 20, purely because you have to have 15 years left once you're finished your application, finished your application and your drawdown of your funding. So if this deadline's 8th of September, you might not get notification for another six months. Then your drawdown could take you another six to 12 months. You have to have your 15 years from that final date. So that's adding another two years on. So that's why we always say, you know, if you can try and get 20 years, because then that covers you for those available. Um, for those sort of delays that may come up or anything like that there. Template for, uh, Appendix 5A is for when it's a school. So if you are um, putting in an application on behalf of the school, then your whoever owns that land. So should it be your di your local diocese? Should it be um, a education and training board? Should it be an Edmund Rice school, Lakeela school, whatever that is? They need to sign this to say that you have the, the school has the permission to do this work. So the Appendix 5A is for that also. We have um, on behalf of a client got that for anybody who's applying even on OPW ground. So you can apply for that as well. You can use Appendix 5 with a letter attached from OPW. Um, but you would need to speak to the Sports Capital Unit before you do that as well. But because they only have the one for the school, the formal one for the school and for all other private landlords. So that's Appendix 5 and Appendix 5A. 5A is for schools, 5 is for um, any other landlords. So then you need to have your match in finance. You need to have your quotation for all your work. You need one quote. Um, you will have to go to procurement again when you go to draw down your money. So always, um, you don't have to use anybody who made you the first quote. You can go to three completely different companies. And that's my contact details there, if you wish to ask me any more questions. But let's go to the Q&A and see.
what's waiting for us now? There's a few added in there. Um, let me go back to where we were. Um, when you mention a lease of 15 years, is it 15 unexpired years if original 15 lease, which is two years old now? That's um, what I was saying. It has to be yeah, 15 yeah. years as of the last payment. So that's what I'm saying. By the time you apply, and by the time you maybe get the announcement and then, you know, you draw down your money, you could be talking 18 months. So make sure at least 18 months. And um, so I would always recommend to go for 20 if you can. Um, yeah, that's been answered in a couple of questions there on that. So can a town or village qualify for a 500,000 application as they have no NGB to apply? Um, I'd need to double check. To be perfectly honest, yeah, I wouldn't like to say yes or no right now. Um, I think you could because you would be a multi-sport centre, I'm assuming. And I think if you had your local authority supporting you, but I would need to double check that. And if you want to drop me an email directly, I can double check that for you. Um, the next one there, the guidelines say the more you contribute, the more points you get. So the, this person is assuming that if she contributes 25%, you get more points than if you can only afford five percent is that correct yes it's that sc sliding scale again on what points you get for your match funding can a community association apply separately to the local cl club yes certainly but they can't apply if they're a partner so they can't apply twice so they can't benefit twice but yes they can put in an application as well as a local club for anyone looking for big capital mm, yeah, this is just advice, actually, for anyone looking for big capital grants for next round of grants and have got a lease that will be over 15 years, they can go back to who the lease is off, for example, if it was council and ask to surrender the current lease and request for a new longer one. Mm -hmm. But to note that it may take a few months for that to happen. So if you are preparing for a grant in the future, this is something to get ready. Yes. How long will it take once you apply to receive the funds? Well, I suppose it's not to receive the funds, it's to receive um, your notice of whether yeah, you're your allocation. Yes. Um, last time round, equipment only took, uh, it was six months for the equipment grant. They always put the equipment grants out first quicker. And um, so it took six months for the equipment grants to, to come out. It took 11 months for the capital grants to be announced. However, this time, the budget has been approved because they went and got additional funding the last time around. So they had to go and get additional funding approved to, you know, to deal with all the level of um, applications that they've received. So I don't think it will be as um, slow this time around. And um, this person is asking, do you have to provide three contractor quotes for each capital no. area? Only one. Um, if we get a license agreement from the landlord of a multi sport complex for five years, can we then apply for our Tennis Ireland Register Club for a grant, or is it still only the sports complex can apply for the improvements? I think you've answered that already. Yeah, you can, you can only club. apply for, in terms of location, only one person can apply. So, how does a single quotation work if the works involve multi contractors? We need a contract for each different type of piece of work it is. So if you can get one contractor who will price everything and then when it comes to actually doing your procurement, you might have to get different contractors. But a lot of the contractors will give you a price for everything and they will just bring in their individual subcontractors to do the work. So you're bringing in one contractor to do everything. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, so I know the likes of sports grounds, this talk of more failed sports, you know, they would be able to price for lighting, fencing, the sports ground, the whole lot, and um, even dugouts, the whole thing. But internally, you know, you just might have to go to several different contractors. But you only need, but you need one quote for everything that you're asking for. Um, we have a 99 year lease with 89 years left on the lease. Will this club need to supply an appendix five or an appendix four with their application? Appendix five, because they can go for more. Okay. They can go for the larger amount. If you're applying for below 70,000, how long will it take for them to confirm if you've answered that already about funds when you're announced? Yeah. If going for an SEAI government grant for upgrades to heating system, do they need to reference this in the application also and specify what percentage will be fulfilled under that grant? No. You can reference that you are applying, but you don't need to reference much or anything like that there. 
Okay, well, this department, so the Department of Tourism, Culture, Gwaeltoch, etc., know that you've applied for funding from another department or the same department. So if there is other funding opportunities open and you applied for them through different channels, will that impact submitting yes. another application? If you're applying for, so say you've got a community, a full um, development plan you would need to have very clear lines of what you're applying to the sports capital for or what you're applying for the department of community and rural development for or what you're applying to leader for so you would have very clear and um, distinct areas of the different projects within your overall plan on who is funding what because you cannot you know match one you cannot double fund them so you couldn't say um right we're going to get the upgrade of this um, sports hall and the gym and at the same time we're going to apply for it through DCRD or through you know the community recognition fund or anything like that you have to they do know who's done what and that's all done through the tax number that's why they have a tax number so they can keep a track of who's getting what um that's great that's answered so one would one quote for sports equipment be enough um just this is a boxing club and they only really have one really good supplier yeah, yeah that's um, absolutely fine i think i can answer this one will these kinds of grants be available every year in the future um the answer is we don't know same i think for you trisha it's two and a half we, years since the last one know. was announced yeah. and the, before that it was two years as well it seems to be every two two and a half years that they are announced, but they're not annual at all. No, and like this person is saying, better to prepare for the future than throwing in a bad application. Now, that that's right, I suppose, depending on the needs of your club. But if if there's a committee there that can put together a good plan on what the funding and future of the club might look like, then it's helpful. Yeah, and I also think apply for something you know, and get used to the process. So even if it's just for some equipment, you know, get yourself used to the forms, the Oscar system, let Sports Capital get to know you rather than going in with just one big one in another two years time. So I'm sure there's things that, especially equipment, they just keep promoting equipment, equipment, equipment. They want clubs to apply for equipment um, because they want everybody to get something. And that seems to be the whole um ethos and golden thread going through all the notes that's going out and you know they really want to encourage um people to take up this opportunity so i wouldn't yes but it doesn't have to be a bad application you don't have to go for everything straight away at the first time if you're not ready for it you know don't try and um put yourselves twisted in all ways to make yourself ready but I would be applying for something small that I'm sure every club can support you know should it be balls and bibs or a bit of training equipment or goal you know mobile goals and you know sticks tennis rackets so that the kids don't have to have their own you know like there's so many different sports that it's you know, kids are put off going into starting to play for sports. And I'm talking as a mom here, you know, like my kids, John, I'm sure most parents would know this. Kids change their mind from one day, one week to the next, what sport they want to be in. And by the time you buy out the kit, you know, that's half, the, you know, then they decide they don't want to play that anymore. So, you know, I've went through gymnastics, hockey, horse riding, camogie, and now we're into football. So, you know, have equipment available for the kids that are to come and use it i know one time we had a triathlon club um it was way up in the midlands and they had some um bikes so they did because the price of these bikes are you know thousands and thousands so the people who wanted to come along who just didn't have the money to start investing in you know competitive bikes so they had a few that you could use and you could borrow to train on or to even compete on um a really good bike that they could you know compete as part of their team so those types of things like that's fantastic and i think that's a fantastic investment into your club and really raises it raises the morale and the spirit of your members that you're able to do things like that. Um, like there's some things you can give out as like little packs um, to help them, you know, I, I just go for something. Should it be only five grand, 10 grand? It's not that difficult but to go for equipment. All you need is a quote and match funding. That's all you need to show in terms of paperwork for, to do your, um, your application. So I would really strongly urge you to go for something. 
Um, the next question there is a GA club has equal access to facilities for both male and female participants, but we're still three separate clubs at present. The ground rests in the GA club's ownership. Should the three clubs make an application together? Would the LGFA club, Camogie, have to register for Oscar if we do it jointly? So I would put in the um, your two clubs, should, the, all three clubs should be registered on Oscar, but I would be putting in the application from the ownership of the club with your two partner with your two partners um, as users sharing facilities under your partnership agreements and they can be five or 15 years that's up to you um, but I would definitely be putting it in as a three of you but the name on the application will be the owners of the actual ground the next one there then is about equipment and um, what percentage Weight and percentage must dis be disability access. Is it the same percentage as previously? Disability access is just that all equipment that you buy um, can be accessible if you're not buying specific, you know, um, for those with disabilities. So there isn't like a percentage. It has to be disabled. It has to be. Um, there is a there's a an organization I just can't think of it off the top of my head because I'm not written down but it's in the guidelines in the information pack that you must just double check with it's on this here that it fulfills a certain um guideline but it's in the guide it's in the pack so it is I'm sorry it's a website address you can just check on um another question there is there anyone who can feed back to the department to give more notice of a timeline of it open opening or potentially opening so organizations can get prepared so is there a way to be back to the part to the department to give more notice is that is that everyone's responsibility to get in touch with the department do you think i think it's get in touch with your td you know um the tds are very involved and i don't know i'm hearing it from some of our clients and from others that they're being inundated with letters from their local tds about the sports capital program and that they're there to help at any time. And there seems to be a massive mail shot going out and campaign from each of the TDs in all the different areas and um, saying that they're there to help with um, the process. So I would definitely drop them an email, make a phone call and say, you know, is there any chance you could put pressure on the department to extend the deadline? We're doing it from our point of view. Like anybody we talk to, we're always saying to them, is there any chance this deadline getting extended for a couple of, even a couple of weeks, if they could even give it to the end of September? Because you've got schools here who are all off on leave. Um, and it's so difficult getting license agreements, even getting some of the Appendix 5 signed by a solicitor. It's really difficult to get a solicitor because a lot of the law offices are closed for the month of August. So um, this is a, it is a challenge for people. And I would say we're doing it. Um, lots of other clubs are doing it. Contact your TD and say they have all offered their help and assistance and say, well, is there any chance you could raise the issue of the closing date? Um, this is another equipment related question, but it's in relation to IT and it's helpful for, say, an archery club to have cameras and video recording equipment. So would that sort of apply to having been equipment needs then in that grant? I had this discussion with somebody else the other night um, on basketball and they were saying, from my point of view, video equipment is for training purposes. So you can play back on the different, um, you know, games or, you know, competitions and or training and learn from that. It says IT and telecommunications. So it's like a computer or a, um, a phone is not eligible. But if you're asking for, and you can put a very good case of why you're doing it. Now, if it's just because we want to stream our games and get more people to support us, that's not going to work. Um, if it's to help your young people use, um, you know, gain skills from other games and from the senior teams, things like that, it's how you sell it. It's how you put it across. I wouldn't focus on it too much um and don't waste if that's the only piece of equipment you're doing you, you have the space to really sell it but um focus on how it's been used for training purposes um if you're on a short lease do you need to know this for portable equipment 
if that's nope. what you're applying for. If you're going for equipment, you don't have to worry about leases or planning or anything like that. Does your licensed partner need to be registered on Oscar? So like a community games group, do they need to be registered? No. Um, you only need to be registered if it's a school is taken in a sports club. Um, I have someone suggesting that the disability organisation, the name is CARA. That's it. It's a Active Disability Ireland is the Google search for that now rather than CARA. So that's the new name for the organisation. Um, another question, if you apply. Yeah, because you might see my daughter's TikToks if you look up CARA. <laughs> if you apply for gym equipment as part of a sports club, would you be insured to cycle a few bikes outside on the road if doing specific warm up circuits? I think it's a bit, that's, um, part, that's a part of your insurance as a club that you would be looking at. It's nothing really to do with the grant or anything like that there. That's insurance in terms of what you have set up for your club. Can a club apply for both capital and equipment? Up to a maximum of 200, yeah. And is that through one application or do they need to be two separate applications? One application. Um, this is another. Is CCTV applicable? Because you've heard before with other grants like the CAB fund that they won't fund it as other funders do. This person's trying CCTV to CCTV is covered, yeah. Is the replacement of old gym equipment covered? Yes, if it's more than 10 years old. And then we have our LED floodlights equipment our capital show yes their capital um that's the end of the questions that i and have there's here. somebody has raised their hand Anne o'connell i think it is yeah Anne o'connell okay um i'll allow you to speak there Anne. yes Anne. hi sorry do you want to unmute yourself there Hi Anne, there we go. Hi Anne. Yeah. Hi. How can no, I help I'm, you? No, it's okay. Are you okay? All right. Yeah. No problem. So actually, there's another question there. Um, would a defibrillator be covered under equipment? Yes. And outside of the character limits, are there any limitations around underlying your use cases by hyperlinks? So can you put in a website link to videos, et cetera, or are these just ignored? They'll just be ignored. But they will they will ask you, there is a box where they ask you for your social media. So if you want to put in the addresses in that, but it, they'll just ask you for the links for it. So they'll ah. ask you for whatever you have in terms of... Um, um, can um, can they apply to replace a manual scoreboard with an electronic scoreboard? Yep. Um, will a bank want a full loan application in order to give approval in principle or go on relationship or the history of account balances, previous loan repayments? That's the bank. I couldn't speak on behalf of why the bank would give you a loan or not. You'd need to deal with them directly. If you are replacing existing floodlight bulbs with LED, is that equipment? No change in the poles, so they're just replacing bulbs. Um, yeah, it's it's either or. It doesn't really matter. You would just be putting in your quote, um, because you won't require planning permission for it. Um, but if you're going for the work, would electric car charging ports be covered? There is other funds available for that. So that is listed in Appendix 6 where they've actually mentioned that. Um, so you'd need to have a look to see is there an other option. Appendix 6 has a table of other potential funding sources for environmental initiatives. So have a check of that. And if there isn't, then, there, you know, electric charge imports has got nothing to do with sport as well as you know whoever's coming in but it there is something in there about it being allowed but you need to go through um appendix six for that one is sonar panels equipment or capital it's capital because you will need planning permission for it and it's fixed equipment is you could put it in the back of a van or the back of a car and drive away with it um, is it good to add photos of how the club currently looks to help visualise where the funding would be used? There's nowhere you can put that. 
And do you see, there's people will upload letters of support and they'll upload um, tens and tens of letters of support from all different sorts. They will not look at them. So the only thing they will look at is the license agreements. They will not look at the letters of support. While it's lovely to have them, you can put it in that you're supported by them, but they will not look at that letters of support. And then there's just someone looking for clarity there. Existing lights, if you're just replacing with LED, so is it equipment or cap or capital if you're just replacing the, the bulbs? It's just equipment because you're only buying bulbs. But the thing is, if that's if that's all you're applying for, you know, that's what you would be just putting in as an application. However, if you're putting it in for other things, you know, you don't actually tick a box to say equipment or capital as such for what 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 you know what they are. But if you're only just buying the bulbs, I don't I, there wouldn't be any relevance to say if it's equipment or capital, it'll not make any difference to you in what way they will um judge you. So I'm, I'm at the end of the questions there, but um, I'll just stop the recording there. Myself.